Hello, I'm Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm showing you a classic commercial that for many of us will bring back memories of childhood, whether it was an ambulance, a local tradesman or even the ice cream van that we looked forward to seeing in the summer. It's the Bedford CF2. So in today's video, this is a Luton bodied one. We're gonna have a look in the back, don't worry, but we're gonna have a look in the front to bring back some of those memories. And we're also going to take it for a drive. So lots of exciting stuff today. But before we get into any of that, let's have a message from our channel sponsor. Life is too short to drive something boring. So if you're looking for your first classic or your next classic, why not check out Binning Classics Auctions? Whether it's something pre-war, mid-century, or maybe something newer like a retro hot hatchback, check out their website. There's a link in the description box below, or you can Google Binning Classics Auctions. There's new stuff going on the website every single week. So why not check them out? Now let's go back to the video. To tell the story of the CF properly, we've got to include the original CF, which of course launched in 1969, and it came in to replace the old Bedford CA. Now, if you're a Canadian viewer, you might know it as the Envoy CA. The CA had done really well for Bedford, and in fact, whilst it was on sale for 17 years, it spent most of its life as the UK's best-selling light van range. Anyway, the CF came into an interesting world because the biggest competitor of the time was the Transit and this had launched four years earlier and Ford had brought that in to replace the Thames and it had come in and it had done quite well because it had not only taken market share but it had bedded itself firmly in with the target market. Now prior to the transit launch, Bedford hadn't just been sitting about, they'd been working on a replacement for the CA, but they'd scrapped the mock-ups after the launch of the transit and they moved forward with a new plan. They thought to themselves, we're not only going to match what Ford offer, but we're going to better it. And a great example of this actually is the critical load dimensions of the CF were better than the transits. And Bedford had to get it right with the CF because, of course, by this point, there's a lot of investment and development. And we're going to talk about the sales percentage figures later because you'll be able to see from that that Bedford absolutely nailed it. Now, just like Ford, Bedford saw the need for modernisation simply beyond beating competitive vehicles. And they did away with things that maybe weren't in keeping for the modern times, things like the sketchy column change. And they brought in a more contemporary, easy to use floor mounted gear change, which continued then into the CF2. And you'll see in this vehicle today. Although the floor change was gone, the engine mounted midway into the cab stays, which is kind of a hangover really from that CA. And I'll show you when we look inside that this is actually a bit of a pain, especially if you want to do basic bits and pieces. However, to just end it at that is an absolute disservice because there's so much more than that. There was a 25 model range on offer with the CF easy loading considerations and it had things like sliding or hinge front doors, low loading heights. This was a vehicle designed with the end user in mind in a way that I don't think manufacturers always get right. But the development didn't stop there. There was rack pinion steering used, independent front suspension, and telescopic shop absorbers all round. Everything from standard of ride to driver comfort with the new style upholstery was considered and more importantly, was actioned. And then in 1983, comes what Bedford dubbed the revelation. It was the CF2, which is what we're testing here today. Now, some of the changes are cosmetic. If you've seen the CF1, Furious Driving did a fantastic video on one, you'll see that this is a modernised look. However, there were some other key considerations, things like rust considerations, which is a really big thing. So for those of you that live outside of the UK, we have salt down on the road for months at a time. So things like rot and degradation of bodies, it's a really big thing. So by the time the CF comes in, bodies now include zinc coated steel. The front end was high strength molded plastic. The bumpers were designed to resist minor damage. And the lower half of the door interiors, front section of the bonnet and the whole underside were treated with a wax 
wax coating. This was a massive deal because of course it extends the vehicle life and for businesses that are looking at the bottom line, this is a really big thing. In addition to this, there were many mechanical upgrades, including new engine options, which I talk about later. In many ways, they got it so right with the CF1 in the first instance, there didn't need to be an enormous shakeup for the CF2. It was more about smartening build quality, modernizing a well-loved product, and of course thinking about what people all over the world wanted because this was a vehicle that was still selling all over the world even though we'd left those era of the 50s, 60s that we talk about sometimes when you've got the empire and everything's selling abroad. Things like this were still selling well all over the world. So they thought about that and they continued to give the market share exactly what they wanted. Now, if you're wondering how long it lasted, well, it didn't last as long as the CF1, and the CF2 came to end in 1986-1987. And you'll see in this video that Bedford made a great vehicle. They made great vehicles in the plural. They deserved a better outcome, and it's a crying shame that it's a name which is no longer familiar to the younger generation, because I'm sure many people watching this video today will have fond memories of Bedford and will agree with me that the CF2 really was something. Now let's have a look in this dash and we'll walk you through it in greater detail. I know what you're going to say. I know that you're going to tell me that, oh, it should have been cleaned or, but no, I wanted to test this in its natural state and how we probably all remember the CF looking because I could clean it up and I could give you something factory fresh to show you, a museum piece. But the thing is, is that's not really how they were, is it? Because they were always commercial vehicles or being used for something. They were the workhorses of our society. So did they look factory fresh? Yes, probably for the first three months. But after that, they started looking a lot more like this one, which was why I wanted to test this and show you it. And when you think about it, this is a 1984 model. It's good. This was registered in March 1984 and it's got nearly 75,000 miles on the clock. So let's be honest, it doesn't actually look that bad. And in fact, one of my observations was the fact that the driver's seat, and you think about the fact that it's gonna have had somebody lugging in and out, in the seat, probably a lot. You know, they're not gonna have taken maybe the best care of it. I think it looks quite well. I mean, you look at cars that are on 60,000 miles, 50,000 miles from this era, and the seats tend to look absolutely knackered. I think this has actually held up quite well. Now, coming inside, you might have noticed when we looked under that bonnet that there wasn't everything that you maybe wanted to see. And that's because this is a semi-forward layout in this. And for those of you that perhaps don't know what that means at home and you're quite new to this sort of thing, um, a good example of a forward layout for you to go back and watch would be that comma van that we did. That's a forward layout and that kind of means that um, it kind of just drop straight down you've got everything inside now when i said to kev who's helping me out today because he's borrowed this you see and i said um oh can we show everything under the seat so you'll notice you've got this cowling inside that covers this central piece and that's where you would lift to get to the carb the main engine so any of your big work will be that and he went i'm not taking that off he went it's an absolute faff to take off and to get apart so unfortunately i'm just showing you that there but we're not going to be able to look under that today now talking about what else we've got inside, it might not surprise you that we've got rubber matting inside. I don't think anybody was probably expecting carpet because remember this is a commercial vehicle. Do you remember when we looked at that Morris Minor van a few weeks ago and we talked about how although that had carpet fitted now, it would have had rubber matting fitted from new. That was de rigueur really for commercial vehicles of the time and even now. Now apart from that we have got a very basic layout inside. We've got this fantastic long part down the middle of the dash here which is bizarrely wood trimmed and you just chuck all your bits in there so whether it's tools bits and pieces in this we've got a coil and a brush not entirely sure why and then coming in front of you here you have well quite a spartan layout. Now you've got three dials in front of you, you've got your speedo, you've got your petrol gauge and you've got your temperature gauge and the selection of warning lights around that, none of those have lit up, thank goodness. And then to the left hand side of that you've got your heater control and you've got your choke there and on the right hand side you've got a selection of 
switches. So you've got your hazard warning lights, you've got your headlights and you've got your fog lights there as well. And there's also an empty panel there. So I guess that was for an optional extra that you might have wanted to put in. Now I know there will still be people watching that think, is this really a classic? Well, what what provenance has it got? Do you want me to tell you a really interesting fact? In the late 70s, early 80s, the Bedford CF, and then later CF2, that counted for 44% alone of Bedford sales. And they were everything, weren't they? From ice cream vans, ambulances, workhorses. They were able to do everything. And it's incredible, really, because when did you last see one? You just don't see them anymore. But that's how many and that's how popular they were, that they just sold so many of them. And that really is a quick run through of what we've got. We've also got an ashtray. I mean, people are probably just winding down the window and flicking the ash out the window and the cigarette. But it's it's easy enough. It's just as it is in the tin, really, isn't it? It's just a workhorse. I think when these came to market in the 60s, they came to market in 1969, I think there were 25 variations. Um, I think I mentioned it in the walk around, but the engine in this is the 2.3. I believe you could have got the 2 litre as well. The earlier slump, so if you go for the earlier CF, you get the well, I think it's the 1.6 and the 1.8 slant four engines. Um, but I mean, can you imagine trying to drive with that Luton body on the back and this having the um, having the 1.6? We just wouldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding. We wouldn't be getting up these hills around Yorkshire. So I guess that's everything really to chat to you about. I'm quite nervous actually to take this out today. I've not driven it yet. Um, but first of all, let's get it started up. I know that a lot of you love to hear how these sound. I'll let you listen from the inside and then I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll show you from the back as well. On an adventure. Oh, <laughs> and just like that, at 30 miles per hour, we're up into top gear. Now, I'll let you into a little confession I keep checking the rear view mirror because I'm so used to doing it. There is such a natural reflex and every time I check it I'm like why can I not see anything? Um, that's a very strange sensation. But these door mirrors are actually a lot better than I thought they were going to be because they're quite sizeable. A little bit like that Morris Minor bag. I can actually see everything that I need to see which is quite handy. Let's talk about handling on this because I have been very very surprised. I thought when I jumped into it that it was going to be um, quite cumbersome, quite heavy. I thought, oh, here we go. We're going to be. It's going to be like an arm workout for the afternoon. But here's a little secret for you. This is lighter and more responsive than my Proton. As we move there, look. Just the, even though we're only moving very slightly, we get a positive response straight away. It is really, really easy to drive. And now, in terms of what I've driven that would maybe compare or that I could draw some sort of comparison. Where I used to work at the motorist, we had a Mark I Transit. Now I know it's a bit older than this, but in terms of competitor wise, one of the biggest competitors for the CF was of course the Transit. And we had kind of a later Mark I Transit and that was not as nice to drive as this. Now when you change gear in this as well, something that I should say, if you've got four forward gears, is that it's very easy, it just kind of clicks into gear. It is so much easier to drive than I expected. The seats are very comfortable as well. We 
which isn't something you always get on a commercial. Sometimes you find that they go as cheap as they can get away with to keep the cost down for fleet buyers. Um, and you end up with a bit of a sore bum by the end of test. But in this, no, it's bang on, it's really nice. And the more that I drive this, the more that my confidence grows because it's relatively easy to drive in terms of handling. I'm not having to rag it round. It's easy to manoeuvre. I've got pretty good visibility. Of course, I'm still getting used to feel, the feel of how long the vehicle is. I wouldn't like to be reversing it at this stage because I'm relatively new to it. But I think actually, if you gave me a few days to get used to it, I reckon I could be reversing it. I could be um, bay parking it. I don't think I would have a trouble with it. It's a very, very amiable, nice little thing to drive around in. It's not the fastest thing. I mean, if you think we've already got that Luton body on the back, we haven't got anything in it, but say you were delivering something, I don't know, television, sofas, furniture, that would weigh it down even more. I imagine that this would be very, very slow, but unladen as it is today, it is so nice to drive. It's really taken me by surprise, actually. I just had visions of really detesting the entire experience. It's quite loud inside the cabin. Um, feels quite jittery as we come over. But look, it's a workhorse. I wasn't expecting something that was polished, that was smooth, that was going to give me a pleasurable drive on par with a Bentley or something with a hydrogas suspension. It does, what it's, it does what it's meant to do, it's comfortable enough and it's easy enough to drive and that is pretty much everything in a nutshell. I can see exactly why people pick these. It's nicer in terms of gear changes, in my opinion, it's nicer in terms of gear changes than the Transit and I've also driven, do you remember, and it was a really early test but I have driven it since, that Freight Rover. It's nicer to drive than the Freight Rover as well. Of course, if you're used to the steering wheel kind of being there, you do have to get used to it being kind of a, you know, almost like that bus driver vibe of it being something you're reaching down to. Love your big steering wheel, but I prefer a bigger steering wheel. And as I mill around these little Yorkshire villages, and for those of you that like to know where we're on test, we're in Marsden today near Huddersfield, it's good enough. And as you can see, we're coming to a stop here for the zebra crossing. In fact, it gives me a chance to show you how to change down. But as you can see, I'm not even having to double D clutch. And when you go between the gears, the best way that I can describe it is kind of click, click. It's so, so pleasurable. I wish that more cars had transmission units as lovely as this one. It's so easy to drive. I just, I guess I wish it was a bit faster, but hey ho, we're not gonna be the fastest milkman in the West today. Now that's everything really. I know that it's been quite a brief test, but it was quite an easy car to, it was, well, easy van to drive. I've enjoyed it. Um, would I drive one of these if I needed something commercial? Absolutely, it's incredibly easy. And for the time, I think that it holds its own. And even stuff that I've taken out today, like I've taken out a few things like, um, I've taken out modern transit. I've taken out some of the things that, you know, like your Peugeot partners, Bilingos, and it's just as enjoyable to drive. And I think if you were looking, if you've watched this video and you're looking for one of these for a camper conversion and you've not driven anything old, the one thing I will say is I don't think it'll take you much to get used to. It's, it's very, very easy to maneuver around and I think you'll enjoy it just as much as I did. So until next time, when we're looking at something completely different, and I've got a few test drives actually to uh, edit up, so I'm not sure what you're going to see next, but I know it will be different because we've got a very wide range of things on back catalogue. Take care and drive safely.